Massive expansion announcements and some epic new titles all coming up. Hello and welcome, I'm Matthew and this is the Watch It Played News. We've known that there was a Viticulture expansion coming for a long while now, but now we know that that expansion is an expansive cooperative mode that takes you to various asymmetrical regions around the world. I, I, I wasn't expecting that. I kind of thought it would just be, you know, more cards or the introduction of a couple new seasons like Indian Summer and Blanuary. In Viticulture World, you as a group are trying to achieve global recognition in the wine biz as you balance the management of your individual vineyard with the combined efforts of your fellow players to gain influence within the region. It's got a bunch of new stuff, a new board, tiles, tokens, event cards, and in each game you'll have a limited time to both make sure everybody is 25 victory points and the shared influence token must be at the end of the influence track. I love Viticulture, it's one of my all-time favourite games, I talk about it all the time. I do think this was a lost opportunity to have my face on one of the cards, but this is in Instabuy territory for me. Pre-orders for Stonemaier Games begin in early June, followed quickly by shipping and then a retail release. And something else that's as smooth as a Californian Melback is this segue to this sponsor that in part helped make this episode possible. Legendary, The Spy Who Loved Me, a James Bond deck building game expansion from Upper Deck. Recreating iconic scenes and chases in this new expansion for Legendary, James Bond, which follows the plot of the classic film, The Spy Who Loved Me. Whether you're on land or underwater, your foil notorious villains complete epic missions and encounter all new perils. Events that force Bond into traps and dangerous scenarios. Be they shark pits or flamethrowers or shark with flamethrowers, talk about a fish fry. And Q's got some new keywords for Bond. Nobody does it better, emphasises Bond's ability to adapt to any situation, allowing cars to become any class, and new indestructible villains escape after being defeated, instead of being added to a player's victory pile. Legendary The Spy Who Loved Me, a James Bond deck building game expansion, is now available. What's your next mission? Well, that's to find it at your local friendly game store, Fish Fry, or upperdeckstore.com. <laughs> Deep Print Games and Pegasus Spiel have announced the one to four player Sky Mines for release later this year. And what makes a lot of people very excited about Sky Mines, other than all that sky gold, is that it's very much the new updated version of Alexander Fister's Mombasa, a game that's been out of print for a good long while. And this adaptation has a new co designer, Victor Colbeek, a new theme, as well as new content in general. 50 years ago, humanity began mining the moon and the asteroids. I remember it well. And for decades, that task was firmly kept in the hands of the world government. But the turmoil of recent years has caused this enterprise to collapse. Now, adventurous companies and private investors take to the sky to revive this mining network. What could possibly go wrong? At the heart of this design is the card programming and hand management system that requires careful and clever planning. Sorry, that should say that requires very careful and very clever planning that will go wrong. You're trying to earn cryptocurrencies while mining helium in space. Let's be real, all your careful planning is going to go wrong when it releases later this year. <laughs> I am very familiar with Castles by the Sea, mainly because of my holidays in Wales growing up, but it's also the theme for Brotherwise Games' upcoming Kickstarter. And Castles by the Sea is being described as tiny towns meet Santorini, which is true in many ways, but it also feels super unique. Thematically, you are playing as the tiny shorelings, just the little little ones, who are forced to build and rebuild your sandcastle kingdom as it's threatened by the terrors of roaming dogs, babies and kites, among other things that ravage the beach. And this plays out for two to four plays in a spatial puzzle where you add to the sand blocks that are already out to create patterns of blocks matching the cards that allow you to place out special buildings and characters which in turn get your sand dollars, then the different hazards that circle the kingdom you have to calculate when they're going to strike. It's all about building and rebuilding. There's loads of variation in the structures, the private goals and the hazards. And if it sounds like I like this game, then you'd be right. I got to play a game of Castles by the Sea and it's exactly my jam. And I also beat Paula by one point. 
which is the best amount of points to beat somebody by. If any of that sounds good to you, then the Kickstarter for Castles by the Sea is running right now. Next, we move over to GameFound, who along with Awaken Realms and Ravensburger announced a new mega special deluxe Castles of Burgundy. And if you're thinking, but didn't they just reprint the Castle of Burgundy in a new edition? Then you'd be right. But this is a very different beast. Seven Fells, the Castles of Burgundy is one of the best games of all time, which is just like my opinion, man. But also, it is. Where you roll dice in order to draft tiles, to grow your province, to score points and make combos. It's fantastic and I love it. This special edition isn't going to be for everyone. This to me seems like a collector's edition in many ways. It has a new art style, metal coins, plastic minis, as well as what they're describing as lots of surprises. People were, well, kind of shocked to see this pairing and project, but for some of the people, this is a dream come true. So if that's you, then the project is set to go live in May. <laughs> Next in the surprise announcements for absolutely massive games category is Fancy Flight announcing Cosmic Odyssey, a whole new expansion for Cosmic Encounter coming this summer. And while the three to five player classic has been expanded before, this expansion is bigger. Actually, it's massive. Fast, yes, there are going to be new aliens. The press release tells us that in addition to the 30 brand new aliens found in Cosmic Odyssey, there's also 12 alternate timeline aliens that longtime players of the game will recognise from the game's history. But also, there's a brand new campaign mode. This mode sees you and your fellow Cosmic Encounterers uh, uh, leading coalitions of aliens through a series of games across the cosmological ages. And while garnering prizes along the way, there's prizes that can be used in subsequent ages or saved for the final age. However, regardless of the win-loss ratio throughout the game, all the winners of the final game will be Conquerors of the Universe. <laughs> Bezier Games are bringing us Catabox Deluxe Edition, which is described as the quintessential quantum trip taking game for two to five cool cats. That's their words, not mine, where your card colour isn't defined until you play it. I love trip taking games, but this one already sounds like it's going to break my brain. And I can't wait because it also, look, look at it. It's, it's cute. You'll hypothesize how many tricks you'll win, and by placing tokens on a community research board as you play, your hand, you, it's all with the aim of connecting groups of tokens together to score more points. But you can't claim the color of a card with the same number than one that has already been declared, because that creates a paradox. And yes, it's gonna melt my brain. But Cat in the Box looks great. I'm very happy this game's getting a deluxe edition. <laughs> Pegasus Spiel also announced Raccoon Robbers, and what interested me about this one is the thought that I could steal myself a raccoon and raise it as my child, but it's actually that it's by Carcassonne designer Klaus Jürgen Werder. In Raccoon Robbers, which is releasing this summer, the raccoons have organised into gangs, and each raccoon gang boss wants to be the first one to reach the famous golden rubbish bin that's filled with endless amounts of thrown away food, and two to four players will do this by playing cards to scale the board while trying to knock down and push the other raccoons back who are racing for the prize. <laughs> Rattus is getting the big box treatment. If you aren't familiar with 2010's Rattus, it's the Dark Age game about the Black Plague where you are taking on roles for special powers, but the more roles you take, the more likely that you'll be the one who gets the plague when the rats come to town. One thing is true, Rattus has more expansions than you can shake a stick at, thus the Big Box edition coming later this year. The Big Box not only includes several previously released expansions and promos, but also previously unpublished materials, modules and bonus cards. This renewed edition of the Rattus line contains all materials of the base game and the expansions Pied Piper, Africanus and Academicus, as well as the new modules Gills and Inns and my favourite named expansion which is just called Bonus. And more actually, the list is very long, so if you want to some Rattus in your life, or like me, you've been interested in the game but never really known where to jump in, then this is a good jumping off point. 
even if it is right into the deep end. And finally, Scott Arms and Gamelin Games have announced their latest Tiny Epic game with Tiny Epic Vikings. In this one to four player game, you are set awash in the frigid runic isles of the North Sea as Viking explorers that are set and determined to navigate the icy fjords, build fertile settlements upon rocky crags and fight for the glory of your clan. What that ultimately means is a lot of card drafting, area control and set collection over the course of three eras where you'll play Viking cards that represent clan leaders choosing the best builders, harvesters, explorers and warriors for the right moments to raid and conquer the islands with settlers, build boats to explore and seize temples to gain influence all while you try to be the one to best please the gods. And it's coming to Kickstarter on the 10th of May. And that's the news, but if you want to know what the people have voted for this month, then continue on to this video with me and Chaz. It gets weird.